Okay, guys, let's take a start with IELTS listening and listening is the module which can bring you even eight band with a little extra effort. For listening, there is no involvement of grammar, right? There isn't any grammar. It's only just what you listen and you got to write it down. For listening, there isn't any serious involvement of vocabulary. We need vocabulary means to understand, but what you write, these words are always simple because it's not your writing test, it's your listening test, okay? And if in listening, uh, today you can notice this thing. If in listening you have a problem <coughs> or spelling mistake, then I have a handout. That handout contains the most common words in IELTS listening, so I can share that handout with you, right? Yeah, you will also demand that from me. Anyways, so let's take a start. Say questions one to four, complete the table below. From this sentence, we understand the type of question. What's the type of question? Table completion. Write one word only. From this sentence, we, we follow the instructions. So sentence number one is question type. Sentence number two is instructions to solve that question type. And what are the instructions? One word only means no number, just one word. And uh, any word with the hyphen is treated as one word. Compound nouns are one word, right? Classroom, you write it together, it's one word, okay? Now, after that, health centers. Health centers are more like clinics. So I want you to imagine some health centers clinics, hospitals, medical facility, doctors, nurses, and all that. In listening, your imagination will help you a lot because there will be pin drop silence in the room. You will be wearing the headphones, headgear. So your imagination will help you. Otherwise, what will happen? In the audio, there will be health center. And in your mind, there'll be something else. So that mind and what you are listening connection for that imagination is very important, right? Health center. Name of health center is given, example is given, we don't need to follow that. Just come to advantage number one, especially good with dash. Now for especially, they might use the word particularly. For good, they might use the word better or any other word. So this clinic, clinic number one is very good for, it can be like for old people for uh, heart patients, for anything like that, okay? Now, I play the audio, listen to it carefully, and let me tell you, whenever it is sentence completion, you need to listen or you need to understand the synonym. Uh, in listening, they do two to three things. Number one, synonyms. Number two, rewording. Like they use another word for that. And number three, we call it paraphrasing. So rewording, paraphrasing, synonyms, and all that. Now, listen to the audio, and by the end, you guys will tell me what is it that they use for especially good with. Let's start. You will hear a man asking for information about health services in the place where he is living. Can I help you? Yes, I've just moved to this area with my wife and children, and I'd like to know where we can all register with a doctor at a health center. Oh, OK. Uh, well, there's Dr Green at the Harvey Clinic. We always recommend her for babies because she's very good with them and she runs a special clinic. This audio is very fast. We always recommend her for, and yeah, for the baby. So especially good for, and for that they use the word, we always recommend her. Now listen to it again. Where's your pencil? Huh? Yeah. You will hear a man asking for information about health services in the place where he is living. Can I help you? Yes. I've just moved to this area with my wife and children, and I'd like to know where we can all register with a doctor at a health center. Oh, OK. Uh, well, there's Dr. Green at the Harvey Clinic. We always recommend her for babies. Be we always recommend her for babies, so especially good with... Babies. We always recommend her and especially good with babies. Babies will be answered. Yeah, this is the small baby, not the big baby. <laughs> Question number two. The Dash Health Practice. Now, it's the name of the health practice, right? 
name of health practice. So they will tell us the name. If the name is unusual, they will spell it for us. Okay, now please listen and answer. Oh, uh, actually, my youngest child is five, so that wouldn't be any good for us. Right. Is there anywhere else I could try? Yes, the Eshkol health practice is the next one on my list. How do you spell that? E S H C O L. E S H C O L. Eshkol. Clear? Very good. All right. Gradually, you'll be. Isko table pe rakhein. Ye jo pagar. Aage chair aage karein. Chair aage karein. Yeah. Active hoke na. Listening karein and dekhein kya ho re. Okay. Uh, doctor's name is given. Doctor Fuller offers dash appointments. Listen, offers dash appointments. It can be time of the day, morning appointments, noon appointments, immediate appointments, late appointments. So answer is going to be something like this. Okay. Now just focus the word offers. For offers, they might use the word he provides. He usually gives. and then the type of appointments so answer is going to be the type of appointment answer will come with the word appointment let's go on and it's dr fuller who has space on his list the clinic only opened a year ago so the facilities are all very modern that sounds good hmm and it's particularly good if you're busy during the day because they also do appointments in the evening hmm they're closed on saturday though they do appointments in the evening so do appointments means offer appointments in the evening what will be the answer evening because it's one word only you cannot write in the evening okay answer is evening and then they said they are closed on saturday so saturday is not the answer because they are closed all clear listen to it again and it's dr fuller who has space on his list The clinic only opened a year ago, so the facilities are all very modern. That sounds good. Hmm, and it's particularly good if you're busy during the day because they also do appointments in the evening. Hmm, they're closed on Saturday though. All right, is this clear? Very good. Now let's go. I mean, this is how you need to focus, and I will share the audio of this handout for your home practice. Right? Question number four. Uh, Short Lane Health Clinic, Doctor Dash. It's the name of the doctor. Very simple. If the name is Siddha, you have to write it on your own. If the name is Putta, they will spell it for you. Okay, simple. The only other place on the list is the health center on Short Lane. You can register with Doctor Gormley. Uh, that's G O R M L E Y. He's new there, but the center has a very good reputation. So, G O. R M L E Y. All clear? Exactly. Very good. <coughs> okay. Now we have double multiple choice in part one. Okay. Double multiple choice. Out of five, you have to select two. Now for this, number one, read the question carefully. What's the question? Which two of the following are offered free of charge? In circle, free of charge. understand now what is free of charge that is your answer where they are charging that is not your answer so you can do one thing for this type of multiple choice use tick or cross if they are charging for something cross it if they say you don't have to pay it is absolutely free we don't charge for it you will not be charged you don't need to pay that is your tick okay now tick and cross now there are five options and by the way they will speak about all options in any order do not expect that first they will speak about option a then b then c they can start from option e vaccination for example say vaccination for that you just have to pay 5 pounds cross it even they charge one penny you have to pay if they say we offer discount what does it mean still you have to pay right so where you have to pay you you will just cross it and where you don't have to pay that is your answer okay what are the options a acupuncture b employment medicals uh, you know employment medicals employees they get medicals facilities right option c sports injury therapy option d travel advice and option e 
vaccinations. So please listen and answer. Now I will play the audio for two questions, five and six. Oh, yes, I think I know the road. That would be the best one. Thanks. Could you tell me, will all their services be free? Uh, there are usually some small charges that doctors make. Uh, let me see what it says about the Shore Lane Centre. If you need to be vaccinated before any trips abroad, you won't have to pay for this. Uh, what else? The Sports Injury Treatment Service operates on a paying basis, as does the Nutritional Therapy Service. Mm -hmm. Some health centres do offer alternative therapies like homeopathy as part of their pay-to-use service. Shore Lane are hoping to do this soon. I think they may start with acupuncture. Oh. And finally, if you need to prove you're healthy or haven't had any serious injuries before a new employer will accept you, you can get a free fitness check-up there. But you'd most likely have to pay for insurance medicals, though. OK, thanks. Option B and E. Well done. First, they spoke about E, vaccination, right? Uh, so vaccination is free. You don't have to pay. After that, they came to sports injury therapy, and there is charge for it. Then they talked about homeopathy and acupuncture, right? But that, that's not free. And employment medicals. For that, they use the word fitness certificate. That is free. So option B for boy and E for elephant. I'm playing it again. Please listen carefully. Oh, yes. I think I know the road. That would be the best one. Thanks. Could you tell me, will all their services be free? Uh, there are usually some small charges that doctors make. Uh, let me see what it says about the Shore Lane Centre. If you need to be vaccinated before any trips abroad, you won't have to pay for this. Uh, what else? The Sports Injury Treatment Service operates on a paying basis, as does the Nutritional Therapy Service. Mm -hmm. Some health centres do offer alternative therapies like homeopathy as part of their pay-to-use service. Shore Lane are hoping to do this soon. I think they may start with acupuncture. Oh. And finally... If you need to prove you're healthy or haven't had any serious injuries before a new employer will accept you, you can get a free fitness check up there. But you'd most likely have to pay for insurance medicals, though. OK, thanks. All right, insurance medical you have to pay, but otherwise employment medicals you don't have to pay. OK, let's go on. Questions 7 to 10. Complete the table below. Again, we have a table, right? Uh, write no more than two words and or a number. No more than two words means maximum two words plus number. So it can be two words plus number. It can be only number. It can be one word plus number, two words plus number. And number, whether it is one or one million, it is one number. Okay, like this. So talks for patients at Shore Lane Health Clinic. Look here. Talks means seminars, right? Talk means a seminar for patients. So seminars for patients and where Shore Lane Health Center. I mean, there is a health center. In the health center, there are three seminars for people. The first one is giving up smoking. Now listen to me carefully. When they give you half minute to read the questions, don't read everything. Don't start giving up smoking 25th February at 7 p.m. Location room number four. No, just do one thing. The question or the information which is given before the question, underline that. What is that? Room four. Underline room four. In the audio, when they say room four, what does that mean? It is, it is wake up call. Answer is going to come. Now let's read the question. Useful for people with asthma. Asthma is a disease. Or dash problems. It's going to be another disease. So answer is going to be a disease. One disease is asthma. Along with asthma, they can talk about any other disease like lungs problem. Right? Like brain problems or any other disease like that. Okay? Now I play the audio. Listen. 
it will start from the first one is giving up smoking we are going to do it on and you know your two hands will work very well this hand which is holding the pencil will be on question number seven and this hand is going to follow the audio when they say on 25th february your this hand is going to be 25th february at 7 pm location room four and then you'll come towards the answer now please listen and answer question number seven you might also be interested to know the centre is running a pilot scheme of talks for patients. I've got the list here. Actually, they look very interesting. What sort of things? Well, the first one's about giving up smoking. It's next week, the 25th of February at 7pm, and that's in room four. It says the talk will stress the health benefits, particularly for people with asthma or heart disease. That sounds very interesting. Heart, yeah, not sweetheart, okay? Heart, yeah, sweetheart. <laughs> right. Okay, so heart is the right answer. Well done. Do you understand this? If you read too much, you will not be able to manage it, okay? Let's go on. Question number eight. Now, just underline 5 p.m. And when they say 5 p.m. in the audio, you should be alert. There now, and this hand will follow the audio. As the audio is proceeding, they say healthy eating, put your thumb there. Then they say it is going to be on 1st March, put your thumb there. This hand will be moving and this hand is waiting to write the answer, right? If you are right-hander. So, uh, question number eight, the dash at shore lane. I mean, what is written on top? Location. So, location means the dash at shore lane. Shore lane is the place and there is one location. For example, this room is called Daffodils. So if they say, the daffodils at Royal Palm. Okay, so the name of the room. Now I play the audio, listen and answer question number eight. There's also a talk for families with children. It's on healthy eating and takes place on the 1st of March at five o'clock. Will that be at the health centre? Um, actually, it's at the primary school on Shaw Lane. I imagine they're inviting the parents of pupils there. It says here, all welcome. Hmm. Primary school. It's at the primary school at Short Lane. I'm playing it again. Listen. There's also a talk for families with children. It's on healthy eating and takes place on the 1st of March at 5 o'clock. Will that be at the health centre? Um, actually, it's at the primary school on Shore Lane. I imagine they're inviting the parents of pupils there. It says here, all welcome. Hmm. OK, so primary School. Now, you should have correct spelling of primary. P-R-I. Yeah, M-A-R. Right? Primary. And uh, in, on exam day, please don't do anything. One of my students, my subscribers, his test is also cancelled. What happened? Writing test was over. Examiner said stop writing and he was removing something. And we say, man, I didn't write I was The invigilator came. They noted down his number. Now his result is delayed. And I'm sure... After a couple of weeks, his test is going to be cancelled. So they are very sensitive about it. When they say stop, examiner is sitting on the stage. When examiner says, candidate, stop writing. Sit like this. Okay, not even... <laughs> Just sit like this. Like, you know, if someone says, hands up. Okay. Uh, my hands are up, right? So be extra careful because, I mean, uh, another student, when uh, reading test was over, she tried to write some answers. <laughs> like that. So she was writing and her test was also cancelled. Test cancelled means, you know, you sign a paper when you pay IELTS fee and all that. So you can't even go to any court or anything like that. So be extra careful. Never write anything. When they say stop writing, drop the pencil immediately and sit like this so that they know you're not writing anything, okay? All right, so let's go on. Question number nine. Now tell me, what can be the answer? Time. And how did we understand the information that is given on top? So this is how you need to see. 9th March at dash. And when it comes to time, for example, if the time is 9.30, you can write 9.30 or you can write 9 colon. Colon is double dot. 9 colon 30. And if they tell you AM, PM, then you write AM, PM. If they don't tell you, then don't write. Okay, very simple. Yeah. 
Let's take a start now. Question number nine. I might go to that if I have time. There's a couple of other talks. One giving advice about how to avoid injuries while doing exercise.、Mm-hmm. It's on the ninth of March. Oh, it's a late afternoon talk at four thirty, and it'll be in room six. Late afternoon talk at four thirty. That's it. So you will write four point three zero or four double dot three zero. That's it. Question number ten. For all. Now see that above they've written anyone welcome for all. Now let's see what do they use for all. Okay, and that is notes. It also says the talk is suitable for all ages. Talk、And、is suitable for all. Finally, there's a talk. Ages. How do you spell ages? A G E S. Exactly. Well done. Well, let's continue. Now you can see there is a picture of water heater. And you must be confused about it. In actual exam, if there is any picture, it will be very, very clear. Now you have the handouts; they are photocopy. So in photocopy, it's not very clear. But in actual exam, it's going to be crystal clear, and you can follow that. Don't be afraid if you see the picture. Like much se to ghar ka geezer nahi chalta. Now they have a water heater. How would I do it and all that? Okay. Now I tell you how to do it. There are only three questions here, right? Uh, one way is, I mean, first you will just see the title. What is the title? Water heater. Now, can you see central heating radiators? And that is the button in the center or middle. Now, one button is on the left, and that is your question number eleven. One button is on the right, and they have written hot water. Now, listen again. Central heating radiators. Below that, there is a button. Can you see it? And that is question number twelve. So they will use the word central heating radiators. It's right below that, whatever they say about it. Okay. And question number thirteen is something below hot water knob, knob or switch or whatever. So I mean, question number thirteen is something there. Now let's try it in a different way. What we do, we don't read the options because you know by the time you go to the options, you see A, B, C, D, audio has reached somewhere else. So what we do, we find the answer and write it down. And later on, when they give you half minute to check your answers, then you can match and see okay, this is that and all that. So we don't read the options. We do question number eleven without reading the options first. Let's see. Section two. You will hear a man who owns a holiday home talking on the phone to a woman who is staying there. Hello. Hi, it's Laura Carlton here. We've just arrived at the holiday flat, but I can't get the hot water and heating to work. Oh right, that's easy. Don't worry. In the upstairs cupboard, you'll find the water heater. You'll see three main controls on the left at the bottom of the heater. The first one, the round one on the far left, is the most important one for the heating and hot water. It's the main control switch. Make sure it's in the on position. The switch itself doesn't light up, but the little square below will be black if the switch is off. <laughs> That's probably what's happened. It's got switched off by mistake. So, switch on and off. Now go back and see which option is it. B, but you will do it later. Now, have you noticed one thing? Ab audio ko sune ya usko pade. Once you start reading, your attention will be diverted, and at the end, tukka lagao. Okay. So over here, even if you write on off switch, or you write switch, or you write on and off, you can easily pick that up. Right. So you will do this at the end, the last thirty seconds. Anything like this, write the word, and later on you can do it. Okay. Question number twelve. <clears throat> Let's see what that is. So this is something below central heating radiators. Understand? Good. The middle one of these three controls, you'll see it's slightly larger than the first one. Controls the radiators. If you feel cold while you're there and need the radiators on, this needs to be turned to maximum. The last of the three controls, the one on the right. Is usually on about a number four setting, which for the water in the taps is usually quite hot enough. Below the heating controls in the middle is a small round plastic button. 
If there isn't enough water in the pipes, sometimes the heater goes out. If this happens, you'll need to press this button to reset the heater. Hold it in for about five seconds, and the heater should come on again. You will need to press this button to reset the heater. So just write reset button and all that. Which option is it? C. But C you will write later. As the audio is going on, just write reset button and later on you can easily find that. Okay. Now question number thirteen. It is something below hot water switch. Clear on the right side below hot water switch. Let's see what that is. Then there's a little square indicator under the third knob that's a kind of alarm light. It'll flash if you need to reset the heater.、Mm, it sounds complicated. Alarm light. For us also, it sounds complicated. Alarm light is alarm light. Warning indicator. Indicator is the light, and alarm is warning. Okay, so you can write alarm light, and later on you can find warning indicator. All good. All right. Very nice. Okay. <clears throat> Wow, we got another interesting one. Questions fourteen to eighteen. Where can each of the following items be found? Items are questions or where? Items are questions. So where can each of the following items be found? Pillows, right? Now, will you read questions or locations? If you read questions. You don't understand. Just see pillow, washing powder, key, light bulb, maps. I mean, this is something you need to do when you are listening to the audio. Main thing is location. <coughs> so, location A, in box on washing machine. Box on washing machine. You know, like sometimes you say machine de utte dabba pya hai, unde je juraba ne. Something like that. Okay, simple in our Punjabi language. Okay. So, in box on washing machine means on washing machine there is a box and something is inside the box. B cupboard on landing, they will call a place as landing. So there is a cupboard there and in the cupboard they have this item. Option C chest of drawers, very simple drawers. There will be the drawers three four. They'll say it is in the chest of drawers or even if they say it is in the draw or drawer, you'll find it there. D next to window in living room, living room. Window and it's there. Something is. I mean, it, these are all locations. Which thing is where? Option E. On shelf by back door. By back door means close to back door. So this is the main door. We have a back door here. On shelf by back door. Back door means near. This is the main door. We have a back door here. On shelf by back door. By means near. Option F. On top of television. Like you said, TV ke upper pada hai. On top of television. And option G. Under kitchen sink. You know kitchen sink. And उसके नीचे देर इज अ कैबिनेट सो इट्स समथिंग दियर पिलोस लेट्स सी योर तुक्का कहाँ पे होने चाहिए टीवी पे तो नहीं हो सकते सिंक में भी नहीं हो सकते कबर्ड में ओके दैट्स राइट लेट्स सी ओ गॉश योर गेस इज राइट ओके ऑल राइट दैट्स गुड लेट्स स्टार्ट क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टीन प्लीज वाल यूर ऑन द फोन वी हैव मैनेज टू फाइंड फ्यू थिंग्स वी नीड लाइक एक्स्ट्रा पिलोज फॉर द बेड्स एंड सम वॉशिंग पाउडर इज देर एनी हियर Pillows,、uh, yes. If you look in the cupboard, the large white one upstairs, to the left of the bathroom door, there should be four or five on the top shelf. Cupboard. There should be four or five on the top shelf. So, option B, cupboard. Right. If you look at the cupboard, top one and four or five are there. Four or five they used for pillows. So for question number fourteen, answer is B. I'm playing it again. While you're on the phone, we haven't managed to find a few things we need, like extra pillows for the beds and some washing powder. Is there any here? Pillows.、Uh, yes. If you look in the cupboard, the large white one upstairs, to the left of the bathroom door. There should be four or five on the top shelf. Clear? All right. Washing powder. Now they said something about it also. Let's listen. And if you want to do some washing, there's some powder for that. Um, <laughs> probably by the back door. There's a kind of shelf there above the sink. In fact, I'm sure there's some there in a large blue box. You need about half a cupful for each wash. By the 
<coughs> back door. Now they use the word box, but that box is not on washing machine. So it's by the door. <coughs> exactly. Option E. I play it again. And if you want to do some washing, there's some powder for that. Um, <laughs> probably by the back door. There's a kind of shelf there above the sink. In fact, I'm sure there's some there in a large blue box. You need about half a cupful for each wash. Is this clear? Okay, now, question number 16, key. Where is the key? Simple. Oh, and that reminds me. The spare key to the back door is hanging on a hook on the wall by the sitting room window. Please make sure to put it back when you've used it. The previous guest lost it in the garden and I had to get another one made. D. Next to windows in living room. Hanging and next to window there's a hook. I play this one again. Oh, and that reminds me. The spare key to the back door is hanging on a hook on the wall by the sitting room window. Please make sure to put it back when you've used it. The previous guest lost it in the garden and I had to get another one made. Okay, now for this also you can do one thing. Instead of coming back and writing there D, in front of D you write 16. Do you understand? This is better. Because if you come back and write audio moves on next, so your attention will be diverted. So in front of six, D you write 16. In front of 15, uh, E you write 15. In front of four, uh, uh, B, you write 14. Okay, and then later on you can transfer them. Okay, light bulbs. Let's see where the light bulbs are. And if you have any trouble with the lamps, you'll find some spare bulbs in a large cardboard box. It's on top of the washing machine with all kinds of useful things in it. Box, top of the washing machine. So on washing machine and top of the washing machine, option A. I'm playing it again. And if you have any trouble with the lamps, you'll find some spare bulbs in a large cardboard box. It's on top of the washing machine with all kinds of useful things in it. Question number 18, map. Now let's see where that is. Oh, and another thing I forgot to mention when we last spoke. Yes? I've left you a local map so you'll be able to find your way around easily. It shows the whole area. I put it in the top drawer of the chest under the TV in your bedroom. There's a whole file of local information in there too. Thanks. Top drawer of the chest. That is option C. Very good. So until now it's all fine, yeah? But don't worry, surprise is waiting for you. Uh, questions 18, 19 and 20. Complete the notes below, write one word, N or R. Number. <coughs> the best place to park in town means the best place for parking right in town next to the station they've mentioned it there phone number for takeaway pizzas now if you want to get takeaway pizza what's the phone number they will tell you a number and write it down simple very simple question number 19 answer is a number what about visiting the town can you give us any advice yes you'll need to take the car it's too far to walk from the flat really you have to pay to leave your car in all the car parks now, I'm afraid. I like the one that's by the station best, and you can walk to the town centre from there in five minutes. That's where all the best restaurants are. But if you want a takeaway, the Italian one does really good pasta and pizzas. Call 732281 for that one, or 766119 for the Chinese. They're both good, and they'll both deliver to the flat. Okay, seven, double six, double one, that's for the Chinese. Okay, so the right answer is seven, three, double two, eight, one. Yeah, the other number is for the Chinese. That was a trap. How many of you wrote the other number? Bichare, ha, pizza ke chakkar mein Chinese khane lagge. Phir kayenge, meinne pizza order kiya tha, ye Chinese a gaya. Huh? Okay, uh, shall I play this one again? Yeah, all right, yes, no. It can be yes, kar diya, to lagana what about visiting the town? Can you give us any advice? Yes. You'll need to take the car. It's too far to walk from the flat, really. You have to pay to leave your car in all the car parks now, I'm afraid. I like the one that's by the station best. And you can walk to the town centre from there in five minutes. That's where all the best restaurants are. 
But if you want a takeaway, the Italian one does really good pasta and pizzas. Call seven three double two eight one. Okay, seven three double two eight one for pizzas. Now they will talk about Chinese for that one, or seven double six double one nine for the Chinese. Seven double six double one nine for the Chinese. Okay, question number twenty. Railway museum closed on. Very simple. It's going to be a day. At means time. On means day. Right? Railway museum closed on. So let's see. As for places to visit, yes, do go and see the railway museum. The exhibition is small but really good. It gets very crowded on Sundays, so I suggest you visit it on a quieter day later in the week, but not on Thursdays, which is market day. You won't find anywhere to park, and it's also the only day of the week when they're not open. It's Anything the, else? Yeah. Not it's for the, the moment. Only day of Thanks. The week they are not open. That is. Thursday, Sunday, other days they mentioned, but Thursday is the day when they are not open. Okay. Well, guys, let's go on. We've got section three next. Questions twenty-one to thirty. Choose the correct letter A, B, or C. Multiple choice. Question number twenty-one. In her home country, Kira. Check their name. Kira, Kiri, and Kira. <laughs> What do you think, Kira? Kuri or Munda? Japanese male name. Okay, let's see. In her home country. Now they said her. So Kira is a girl here, right? There are some names which are common among male and female. Yeah, it's a. All right, Kira. So in her home country, Kira had. Now what is it that Kira had? Home country. Home country means the native country. <clears throat> Completed a course. Option A means in her home country, Kira had completed a course. Option B, done two years of a course. Option A is completed. Option two B is two years she did in her <coughs> home country. And option C, found her course difficult. Now in her home country, either she did complete course or she completed it, or she did two years course, or she found her course difficult. And uh, by the way. Out of three, one option is correct. They will speak about all three options. Sometimes, oppositely, the options which are not the answers, they speak about them oppositely or negatively. For example, option C, found her course difficult. In the audio, she says, "I found that course quite easy." So C cannot be the answer because it's the opposite, right? Let's see. I play the audio. Please listen and answer. Section three. You will hear a conversation between an English teacher called Paul and a former student of his called Kira. Hello, Kira. How are you? Fine, thanks, Paul. How are you? Well, thanks. It's good to see you. It must be twelve months since you did our course. That's right. It's nice to come back and say hello. What course did you enroll in? Actually, I went straight into third year pharmacy. They credited me with two years, which probably made it more difficult for me. Hmm. On the other hand, you were lucky to be granted credits. Is that why you chose the course? Yes, and as I'd already finished a course in it in my country, I thought it would be easier if I studied something I already knew. I didn't realize you went into third year. I thought you started in first year. No wonder it was so hard. Excellent. <clears throat> Very good. A, done two years of a course. This she said they credited me, right? Uh, then C, found her course difficult. She said easier. Now please do one thing. Write B A C. Please write there B A C. Now this is the order in which they speak. Now I play the audio again. Follow B A C, and you will find it. Section three. You will hear a conversation between an English teacher called Paul and a former student of his called Kira. Hello, Kira. How are you? Fine, thanks, Paul. How are you? Well, thanks. It's good to see you. It must be twelve months since you did our course. That's right. It's nice to come back and say hello. What course did you enroll in? Actually, I went straight into third-year pharmacy. 
They credited me with two years, which probably made it more difficult for me. Hmm. On the other hand, you were lucky to be granted credits. Is that why you chose the course? Yes. And as I'd already finished a course in it in my country, I thought it would be easier if I studied something I already knew. I didn't realize you went into third year. I thought you started in first year. No wonder it was so hard. Okay. So, <clears throat> question number 22. To succeed with assignments, Kira had to. Right? To succeed with assignments, she had to do something. Option A, read faster. Option B, write faster. Option C, change her way of thinking. Okay, guys. Now, I play the audio. Uh, by the way, for read faster, it's very simple. Quick to read. Read quickly. For write faster, write quickly. Right? Or uh, fast writing speed. For change her way of thinking. Change, for change, they usually use the word alter. And for way of thinking, they might use point of view. Alter your point of view. Okay, now let's see. And then I will tell you what is the order and all that. So question number 22, please. And what do you think is one of the big differences between studying at a university here and studying in your country? Well, I found it very difficult to write assignments because I wasn't familiar with that aspect of the system here. The main problem is that the lectures expect you to be critical. That made me feel really terrible. I thought, how can I possibly do it? How can I comment on someone else's research when they probably spent five years doing it? I think a lot of people who come from overseas countries have similar problems. But after a while, it became easier for me. People expect you to have problems with the process of reading and writing, but in fact, it is more a question of altering your viewpoint towards academic study. Hmm. Altering your viewpoint towards academic studies. So that is change her way of thinking. And they spoke about it at the third place. Before all that, they did ba 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 means ba ba means which is not related. Okay, and then they came towards this read faster and all that, and then they spoke the answer. I'll play this one once again. The last part of the audio is important. And what do you think is one of the big differences between studying at a university here and studying in your country? Well, I found it very difficult to write assignments because I wasn't familiar with that aspect of the system here. The main problem is that the lectures expect you to be critical. That made me feel... Really terrible. I thought, how can I possibly do it? How can I comment on someone else's research when they probably spent five years doing it? Okay, so have you noticed sometimes you have to be patient for the answer to come, right? Now, you don't make any sense because they're not saying anything. So don't be frustrated that I must select something and all that. Now, listen. I think a lot of people who come from overseas countries have similar problems, but after a while, it became easier for me. People expect you to have problems with the process of reading and writing. People expected to have problems with the process of reading and writing. Expected means not when they were use the word considered, expected, thought, right? Or we thought it would be something. That, that's not the answer. So expected. But it's not that she had to do it. What she had to do, now they speak about it. But in fact, it is more a question of Altering your viewpoint towards academic study. Hmm. Yeah, it's more of altering your viewpoint towards academic study. So that means change her way of thinking. <clears throat> okay, let's go on. Questions 23 to 25. Complete the sentences below. Write one word only for each answer. So it's one word only, no number. Question number 23. Kira says that lecturers are easier to, underline easier to, and focus this word. Lecturers are easier to dash than those in her home country. Lecturers are easier to find, easier to meet. Answer is going to be a verb. How do you understand it's a verb? Because after two, we use a verb. So lecturers are easier to meet easier to discuss, easier to find, easier to talk, or anything like that, okay? Now, please listen and answer question number 23. Uh, how was the content of the lectures? Was it easy for you? 
I didn't really have many problems understanding lectures. The content was very similar to what I'd studied before. And what about the lecturers themselves? Are they essentially the same as lecturers in your country? Uh, well, actually, no. Here they're much easier to approach. After every lecture, you can go and ask them something you didn't... They are much easier to approach. Well done. They are much easier to approach. Listen again. <clears throat> How was the content of the lectures? Was it easy for you? I didn't really have many problems understanding lectures. The content was very similar to what I'd studied before. And what about the lecturers themselves? Are they essentially the same as lecturers in your country? Uh, well, actually, no. Here they're much easier to approach. Here they are much easier to approach. So approach, A-P-R-O... Good. Yeah, this one P se aapka other band kam ho sakta hai. Keep that in mind, okay? A double P R O A C H. Next, question number 24. Paul. What do they say? Paul suggests. What is Paul? It's a name. Well done. Paul suggests that Kira may be more dash. Now, just underline more. Whatever they say after more, that will be your answer. Underline Kira may be more. Kira may be more and for that they can use you are a more dash for Kira. The other person will say you are a more something like that. For example, you are more responsible. So Kira may be responsible. You are more attentive. Kira may be attentive like that. Okay. Now let's see what do they say after more. Just focus the word more. Maybe you found them different because you're a more mature student now. Whereas when you were studying in your country, you were younger and not so assertive. You are no, more. I don't think mature. that's the difference. Yeah, mm. they use the word mature. Mature is actually mature. We pronounce it as mature. It can be pronounced as mature or mature. Mature. M A T U R E. Listen and focus their pronunciation. Mature. Maybe you found them different because you're a more mature student now. Whereas right. when you were studying... You are a more mature student now. So Kira may be more mature. You are more mature student now. Okay, question number 25. Kira says that students want to discuss things that worry them. That's one point. Or, so listen, students want to discuss things, A, that worry them. And B, that dash them. Now, with worry, there will be another thing. Worry them and dash them. Let's see what that is. Most of the students here do it. In my faculty, they all seem to make appointments, usually to talk about something in the course that's worrying them, but sometimes just about something that might really interest them, something they might want to specialize in. Something that might really interest them. Okay, interest is the answer. Listen to it once again. We have plenty of time, okay? Most of the students here do it. In my faculty, they all seem to make appointments, usually to talk about something in the course that's worrying them, but sometimes just about something that might really interest them, something they might want to specialize in. Okay, so the right answer is interest. Do one thing, underline or that, or that, and write there, but sometimes. For or that, they used but sometimes, okay? All right, let's go on. Questions 26 to 30. Answer the questions below. Write no more than three words. Up till now, the test is moderate. huh? Not very difficult. But only section four has a surprise for you. But we'll do it together. Don't worry. So... Uh, answer the questions below, write no more than three words and or a number for each answer. Now, this is short answer question. Uh, at times, they give you this as well. How did the students do their practical sessions? How did the students do their practical sessions? Underline the word practical sessions. Now, listen. There is one thing in IELTS. We call it referencing. What is referencing? For practical sessions, they will use the word, we did these. First, they will say, and they were practical sessions, we did these. These means 
practical sessions, right? Now let's see how did they do the practical sessions. Focus the word, we did these, and these will be about practical sessions. And how was your timetable? Was it a very busy year? Oh, very, very busy. They make you work very hard. Apart from lectures, we had practical sessions in a lot of subjects. We did these in small groups. We did these in small groups. Exactly. So the answer is small groups. Okay, I just need to check one thing. All right. At the end of the book, they have given the answer groups, but it's uh, no more than three words. So even if you write small groups, your answer is correct. Okay. Uh, all right. Question number 27. In the second semester, how often did Kira work in hospital? Look here. How often do you brush your teeth? Twice a day or thrice a day, right? How often do you go to northern areas? Means frequency. How often means frequency. So the answer may contain a word and a number. Okay, frequency. So in second semester, how often did Kira work in hospital? It can be once a week. It can be twice a month. It can be something like that. Okay, let's see. I had to go and work four hours every week in a community pharmacy. Hmm. Actually, I enjoyed this very much, meeting new people all the time. Then in second semester, we had to get experience in hospital dispensaries. So every second day, we went to one of the big hospitals and worked there. Every second day. Now, how will you write second? Yeah, it's no more than three words. No problem. You can write every as an English word, second even as an English word, and day. Or you can write every two and D. You understand? Two and D, second and then day. Both ways it is fine. Every second day. All right, let's just listen to it again. I had to go and work four hours every week in a community pharmacy. Hmm. Okay, four hours every week in a community pharmacy. That's not about hospital. The question is about hospital. Actually, I enjoyed this very much, meeting new people all the time. Then in second semester, we had to get experience in hospital dispensaries. So every second day, we went to one of the big hospitals okay. and worked every there. Every second day. Question number 28. How much full-time work did Kira do during the year? How much full-time work? Okay, so again, they will tell you maybe how much work. It can be in days, weeks, months, hours, or anything like that. Okay, how much full-time work? Now, you will focus on full-time work, right? Not part-time. And on top of all that, we had our assignments, which took me a lot of time. Oh, I nearly forgot. Between first and second semesters, we had to work full-time for two weeks in a hospital. That does sound a very heavy year. We had to work full-time for two weeks in a hospital. So two will be a number and weeks. W-E-A-K. Thank you. Very good. Two weeks. Plural. Question number 29. Having completed the year, how does Kira feel? Now, her feelings, right? And for feelings, they can use any feeling. For example, if I feel great, if I feel happy, I feel anything like that. So it's going to be her feeling. She'll say, I feel or I do feel much more happy. Answer is happy, right? Whatever she says. So focus her feeling. So, are you pleased now that you did it? Do you feel some sense of achievement? Yeah, I do feel much more confident, which I suppose is the most important thing. I do feel much more. And by the way, before that, there were two traps. Are you pleased? That was a question. Are you, uh, that was a question. Unless she, see, because you know the question is, how does Kira feel? If I say, are you feeling happy? Are you feeling great? You say, I'm feeling miserable. So the answer is miserable. Okay, listen to it again. So are you pleased now that you did it? Are you pleased? Do you feel some sense of achievement? Do you feel some sense of achievement? Question, not, not answer. Listen to Kira. Yeah. Yeah, I do feel much more confident, 
which I suppose is the most important thing. I do feel much more confident. Good. Question number 30. In addition to the language, underline language. And for language, they can, they can use the word French. They can use English or any other word, right? In addition to the language, what do overseas students need to become familiar with? Now, Kira is going to say, the first thing is the language. After the language, overseas, you are going to be overseas students as well. First thing is language. Second thing, she's going to tell us, right? Let's see. And to become familiar with. Now, for become familiar with, for, for this, they might use the word lack of familiarity, right? Lack of familiarity. So if you have lack of familiarity with something, it means you have to be familiar with that, right? Let's see what do they say. And have you got any recommendations for people who are studying from overseas? Well, I suppose they need very good English. It would be much better if they spent more time learning English before they enter the university because you can be in big trouble if you don't understand what people are saying and you haven't got time to translate. Hmm. Uh, anything else? Well, as I said before, the biggest problem for me was lack of familiarity with the education system here. It sounds as if it was a real challenge. Congratulations, Kira. Lack Thanks, of familiarity Paul. with the education system. So, overseas students need to become familiar with education system. All right. All right. Now we have section four. And surprisingly, we have multiple choice questions. Uh, the pattern which we have now nowadays in part four, they give you one word only. In part four, they'll give you one word only. But sometimes... Uh, in part four, they might give you multiple choice as well because, you know, they've got a huge bank of IELTS tests, new and old. So sometimes you get a test where there is multiple choice in part four. And by the way, in IELTS, you don't have any choice. Whatever they give you, you have to solve it. So particularly, I selected this test because in part four, we have multiple choice. Last month, students found this question type in part four. In part one, also multiple choice. Okay, so you should be familiar with every question type. Now, let's see. <laughs> Multiple choice in part four. Wildlife in city gardens. Now, imagine you live in a city and there are gardens. Like, this is a beautiful place here, Royal Palm. So, wildlife. Wildlife means wild creatures, birds, or animals in the city gardens. Like, in our gardens, can you see sparrows, crows, pigeons? and some other bird species, right? So wildlife in city gardens, that is the topic. Question number 31, what led the group to choose their topic? What led the group to choose their topic means why did they choose that topic? And then they have given three reasons. Out of three reasons, and you can notice one thing, options are long. When you have multiple choice in part one, options are very simple. A, Saturday, B, Monday, C, Tuesday. In part four or part three, options are long, okay? Now, let's see. Uh, what led the group to choose their topic? When there are the long options, number one, do not focus the words which are being repeated. Like, they were, they were, they were, and they wanted. Don't focus that. Mainly, there are three type of words which are important. Number one, nouns. Number two, adjectives. And number three, verbs. Nouns, adjectives, and verbs. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to summarize option A for you. Option A. They were concerned about the decline of one species. Just underline concerned, decline, one species. Concerned, decline, one species. One species means one specific species, birds or animals and all that. Is this clear? Option B, they were interested in the effects of city growth. Interested effects of city growth. See that? This is how you will underline and you will do it very quickly. Skim reading. Option C, they wanted to investigate a recent phenomenon. Investigate recent phenomenon. That's it. And by the way, for recent phenomenon, they will not talk about phenomenon. They will talk about that thing that took place. Recent phenomenon. For example, uh, pigeons came to the city area. Now, can you see pigeons in the city areas? 
right? So that is a phenomenon. So they may talk about a phenomenon like that. Now they will speak about these options in any order and you will just focus these words and then decide what's the right answer. Uh, your pencil should be at the end of the option because you know the clue words, decline of one species option A, effects of city growth option B and investigate a recent phenomenon. So put your pencil at the end and then see which option is being discussed. And the question is, what led the group to choose their topic, right? Let's take a start. Section four. You will hear a talk about a project on the wildlife found in city gardens in Britain. Good morning. Today I'd like to present the findings of our year two project on wildlife found in gardens throughout our city. I'll start by saying something about the background to the project, then talk a little bit about our research techniques, and then indicate some of our interim findings. First of all, how did we choose our topic? Well, there are four of us in the group, and one day, while we were discussing a possible focus, two of the group mentioned that they had seen yet more sparrowhawks, one of Britain's most interesting birds of prey, in their own city center gardens, and wondered why they were turning up in these gardens in great numbers. We were all very engaged by the idea of why wild animals would choose to inhabit a city garden. Why is it so popular with wildlife when the countryside itself is becoming less so? Why they are coming, why they like it. So actually investigate a recent phenomenon. And what was that phenomenon? The sparrows were coming to live in the city garden. Right? So option C is the right answer. I'm playing it again. Please focus. Section 4. You will hear a talk about a project on the wildlife found in city gardens in Britain. Good morning. Today I'd like to present the findings of our year two project on wildlife found in gardens throughout our city. I'll start by saying something about the background to the project, then talk a little bit about our research techniques, and then indicate some of our interim findings. First of all, how did we choose our topic? Well, there are four of us in the group, and one day, while we were discussing a possible focus, two of the group mentioned that they had seen yet more sparrowhawks, one of Britain's most interesting birds of prey, in their own city center gardens, and wondered why they were turning up in these gardens in great numbers. We were all very engaged by the idea of why wild animals would choose to inhabit a city garden. Why is it so popular with wildlife when the countryside itself is becoming less so? Clear? All right, let's go on. Question number 32. And one more thing. Whenever you read the questions in IELTS and you read the passage for reading, you read the questions for reading, never read article. Article is a, an, the, some. Okay, and these words are almost in every sentence. Everywhere you will find a, uh, an, some, the. In our language, these words don't have any specific meaning. So make it a habit that you skip these words. Okay, question number 32. Exact proportion of land devoted to private gardens was confirmed by. Very simple. Even if you don't understand what they said before, confirmed by means who confirmed it. Jo kuch bhi confirmed kiya, they will speak about that in the audio. But your concern is who confirmed it. Right now, let's see option A concerning some official documents. So, underline concerning and official documents. Option B taking large scale photos. Photos, these options are short. When the options are short, don't further shorten them. If the options are long, then you can shorten them. Option C discussions with town surveyors. So, confirmed by means how did they confirm it? Option A concerning some official documents. Right? For official documents, they might use the word usage of maps. I mean, documents can be maps or any other thing like that. Uh, taking large scale photos, <coughs> they might talk about photography, large scale photographs, and option C, discussion with town surveyors. So let's see. The first thing we did was to establish what proportion of the urban land is taken up by private gardens. We estimated that it was about one fifth and this was endorsed by looking at large-scale usage maps in the town land survey office. 24% to be precise. Endorsed by. Confirmed by, they use the word endorsed by. 
large scale usage of maps. What is that? Photos are not maps. Documents, exactly. Option A, please listen again. The first thing we did was to establish what proportion of the urban land is taken up by private gardens. We estimated that it was about one fifth, and this was endorsed by looking at large scale usage maps. In yeah, they use the word usage maps, right? So, concerning some official documents, large scale usage. In the usage town maps. land survey office. Okay, this was endorsed by. Endorsed by means confirmed by. Let's go on. Question number 33. Group asked garden owners to. Now, what is it that they asked garden owners to do? Right? Uh, now, you can see multiple choice options are starting with the verb. So, this time verb is important. And they will use synonym of that verb. Okay? I will share this audio recording with you. And when you go back home, listen to it time and again. And go to these questions one by one. Right? Uh, the group asked garden owners to option A, take part in formal interview, take part formal interview. Option B, keep a record of animals they saw, keep a record of animals they saw. Now look here, for uh, take part in formal interviews, they can say they should come and participate in the interviews and all that. For option B, keep a record of animals they saw. For that is if they see a new animal or bird, they should write it down when and how often they saw it and how many times and where they saw it. That means keep the record. Keep record means on daily basis to note down certain things. C, get in contact when they saw a rare species. Whenever they see a rare bird, means one day you see a macaw on the tree in your house. You should call them, hey, I saw a macaw, right? Something like that. Now let's see which option is the right one. Our own informal discussions with neighbors and friends led us to believe that many garden owners had interesting experiences to relate regarding wild animal sightings. So we decided to survey garden owners from different areas of the city. Just over 100 of them completed a survey once every two weeks for 12 months, ticking off species they had seen from a pro forma list, and adding the names of any rarer ones. Okay, ticking off and adding the names. B, keep a record. No, not C, get in contact. No, they said ticking off and adding. Now, I, they give you a performa. You got to tick off and add the name means you are actually keeping a record of the animals. So keep a record. Option B. And for keeping a record, they use the word ticking off and adding names. Question number 34, group made their observation in gardens and this multiple choice question is incomplete sentence. There are different types. One is question mark, one is incomplete sentence, one is agreement, one is decision. So group made their observations in gardens which had large number of animal species. Now underline large number of animals. Option B, which they considered to be representative, considered to be representative. See that which and they, you should ignore that. Option C, stable population of rare animals. Rare animals means animals which are not very common. Okay, now what is option A? Large number of animal species. Option B, considered to be representative. And option C, stable population of rare animals. Let's see. Meanwhile, we were doing our own observations in selected gardens throughout the city. We deliberately chose smaller ones because they were by far the most typical in the city. The whole point of the project was to look at the norm, not the exception. To look at the norm, not the exception. Shall I play it again? If you are still indecisive, please listen. Meanwhile, we were doing our own observations in selected gardens throughout the city. We deliberately chose smaller ones because they were by far the most typical in the city. The whole point of the project was to look at the norm, not the exception. B, which they consider to be representative. Look at the norm, not... They use another word, what is that? Look at the norm, not exception. Meanwhile, we were doing our own observations in selected gardens throughout the city. We deliberately chose smaller ones because they were by far the most typical in the city. The whole point of the project was to look at the norm, not the exception. Okay, now look here. Consider to be representatives. Underline that, consider to be representatives. And right there, look at the norm, not exception. 
Look at the norm, not exception means to look at the representatives. For example, if the crows are many in your area, so that means they are the norm, not, not the exception. Exception means any bird that rarely comes. So look at the norm, not ex exception. For that they use consider to be representative. Question number 35. Group did extensive reading on, extensive reading on. Now they might say we read one or two articles on that, but we greatly read about and all that. Option A, wildlife problems in rural areas. So simple, wildlife problems, rural areas. Uh, for rural areas, they can use the word countryside. For uh, problems, they can use the word decline, issues and all that. Option B, urban animal populations. Urban means city, city animal populations. Option C, current gardening practices. Now let's see. Alongside this primary research on urban gardens, we were studying a lot of books about the decline of wild animals in the countryside and thinking of possible causes for this. So what did we find? Well, so much that I just won't have time to tell you about here. If you're interested in reading our more comprehensive findings, we've produced detailed graphic representations on the college website. And, of course, any of the group would be happy to talk to you about them. Just email us. A. Well done. Wildlife problems in rural areas. For problems, they use the word decline. For rural areas, they use the word countryside. Okay, please listen again. Alongside this primary research on urban gardens, we were studying a lot of books about the decline of wild animals in the countryside and think decline of wild animals in the countryside. Focus again. Alongside this primary research on urban gardens, we were studying a lot of books. We were studying a lot of books. What is that? Extensive reading on. We were studying a lot of books means extensive reading on about the decline of wild animals in the countryside. Decline of wild animals in the countryside. So A is the answer. 36. Speaker focuses on three animal species because reason. So this multiple choice is about a reason. They focus three animal species means three type of animals they focused and what's the reason? A. Lot of data has been obtained about them. Just underline lot of data. And we, we know we are talking about animal species. <coughs> Option B, group were most interested in them. So group were most interested in them. What do they mean by in them? Animal species. So just underline group were most interested. Option C, they best indicated gender trends. So best indicated gender trends. Let's see. What we've decided to present today is information about just three species because we felt these gave a good indication of the processes at work in rural and urban settings as a whole. Wow, very simple. They did not even discuss other two options. What's the answer? C. C. Well done. The best indicated gender trends. Please listen again. For that, they use the word these gave a good indication of process and all that. Please listen. What we've decided to present today is information about just three species because we felt these gave a good indication of the processes at work in rural and urban settings as a whole. Okay, now listen to me carefully. In this multiple choice questions, even they did not discuss some of the options. In part four, if there is multiple choice question, sometimes they don't, I mean, they're ABC. So in, in some cases, like if you talk about question number 36, they did not even say anything about A and B. Okay, guys, now let's go on. <clears throat> Last four questions, questions 37 to 40. Complete the table below, write one word only. So if you had the worst experience with multiple choice, now is your chance to recover. Okay, and one more thing. If you don't understand, in IELTS listening, sometimes you don't understand anything about multiple choice from A to Z. Instead of doing all the tukas, like this is A, this is B, just write all A's or all B's. Come back to this page. If you do the tukka of all A's, how many answers are correct? Two. If you do all B's, how many answers are correct? Two out of six. Okay, so if you don't understand anything at all, then in case of emergency, 
تو کا یہ نہیں لگانا اے بی سی پہلا اے دوسرا بی تیسرا سی نو اٹ شوڈ بی آل سیم کہ جو بھی ہوگا صحیح ہو جائے گا یہ یہ سو جسٹ یو کین ڈو اٹ لائک دس ناؤ ون ورڈ اونلی اینڈ دیز اے ٹیبل وٹ از دا فرسٹ کالم اینیملس وٹ از دی ادر ورڈ فار اینیملس اینیملس نیمس آف اینیملس دے ہیو مینشنڈ آلریڈی سیکنڈ کالم ریزن فار پاپولیشن انکریز ان گارڈنس اینڈ تھرڈ کالم از کامنٹس کوشچن نمبر تھرٹی سیون اٹس دا نیم آف این اینیمل اینڈ یو کین سی بلو تھرٹی سیون وٹ از دیٹ ہیج ہاگس اینڈ بلو دیٹ سانگ تھرش از سانگ تھرش از اے برڈ right so 37 is the name of an animal now listen carefully it's very simple you will not miss it the first species to generate a lot of interesting information was frogs and there was a clear pattern here they proliferate where there is suitable water garden ponds are on the increase rural ponds are disappearing leading to massive migration to the towns the first species was frogs well done you know frogs what do we call frogs in punjabi yeah that do <laughs> very good question number 38 hedgehog now you don't need to read the rest of it by the way when they give you half minute just read that and then underline hedgehog and wait for the audio relax wait when they speak the word hedgehog now you should be alert safer from dash safer from dash means there is something that will not eat them there is something that will not harm them like that safer from dash when in cities so safer from something when it is in cities and for cities they might use the word urban areas exactly so hedgehog is safer from someone right let's see what what do they say about it and for safer they might use any other word and one more thing both answers are coming together now let's see 39 as well easy to dash them accurately now underline easy to and write there not not difficult for easy they use not difficult to uh, dash and to means answer is going to be a verb exactly well done easy to dash now i'm playing these two answers together 38 and 39 Hedgehogs are also finding it easier to live in urban areas, this time because their predators are not finding it quite so attractive to leave their rural environment. So hedgehogs have a better survival rate in cities. We had lots of sightings, so all in all we had no difficulties with our efforts to count their numbers precisely. 38. Predators. Well, good. And 39. Count. I play it again. Listen. Hedgehogs are also finding it easier to live in urban areas, this time because their predators are not finding it quite so attractive to leave their predators are not finding it quite so attractive to live their rural environment to live their rural environment. So they are safer from predators. Predators, if a lion is eating a deer. So what is the predator? Lion is a predator, animal that eats the other animal. So please focus again. Hedgehogs are also finding it easier to live in urban areas, this time because their predators are not finding it quite so attractive to leave. Their predators are not finding it quite so attractive to leave the urban area, so safer from predators. Why? Because they are not there. Question number 39. Now, easy to dash. Their rural environment. So hedgehogs have a better survival rate in cities. We had lots of sightings, so... All in all, we had no difficulties with our efforts to count their numbers precisely. Yeah, we had no difficulties in our efforts to count them. Please focus again. I play this part again. With our efforts to count their numbers precisely. Better survival rate in cities. We had lots of sightings. So, all in all, we had no difficulties with our efforts to count their numbers precisely. All in all, we had no difficulties in our efforts to count their numbers. So, count is the right answer. Question number 40. Song thrushes, song thrushes and a variety of dash. Whenever they use the word variety of, range of, after that the answer is going to be plural. Right? Now please underline variety of and write there extensive range of. Extensive range of. Whatever they say after extensive range of that will be your 
answer variety of and range of they are synonyms so let's see our final species is the finest of bird singers the song thrush on the decline in the countryside they are experiencing a resurgence in urban gardens because these days gardeners are buying lots of different plants which means there's an extensive range of seeds around which is what they feed on there is an extensive range of seeds around and what they feed on now by the way when you read the questions after number 40 do you have any need to read not at all because there it is going to finish okay all right thank you